Hi everyone, if you're an existing subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, thank you very much for clicking the link that got you here in the first place, and welcome. Why not hit subscribe now to stay tuned to find out all the inspirational people that I'm going to be interviewing. Now, this week, I wanted to find out how you become a bodyguard, what the training entails, and how you actually become qualified. So I decided to speak with Phil Moulton, who's running his own bodyguard training courses. Here's how it went. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. So obviously you've been on before, but for those yes. who didn't necessarily watch the, the video with you before, would you mind just introducing yourself? Who are you and what do you do? Hi. Okay. Uh, hi, my, my name is Phil Moulton. Um, I come from Manchester. I work as a course perception operator uh, and also a course perception trainer. Um, I've been in the job for 20 mm. years, mm. 27 years. I've been teaching perception for 20 years uh, but I also teach self-defense, um, personal safety, weapons awareness so I do a lot of things about personal protection. You worked in personal security and close protection, what made you want to go into the teaching side of things? A number of things really, still as an operator now, is, uh, I think basically what I would, wanted to do was uh, bring a different element to the security industries. There's thousands of operators out there that are doing teaching courses and do fantastic courses. But I wanted to bring in a different slant, which was the civilian aspect of it. Because most people teach the doctrines from the, the, the armed forces, the police, etc. And I wanted to bring a different slant to it. And that's why I devised what I did. Okay, really interesting. So you've recently like launch or relaunch should i say your business can you just kind of explain yeah. exactly what it entails yeah okay i originally owned a company called exclusive i'll give you the history very briefly and exclusive was formed by myself back in the mid 90s and it was formed to to basically do close protection and training courses sadly that went in uh, 2010 and I'm basically a operator and running CP courses. I've continued to run close protection courses for many, many years. Um, so I've never relinquished that. It's just that basically I've just relaunched it. I thought, well, we're going to give it a good go. Um, 60 now, so pushing forward. Very good. So also you've just launched on social media your concept of mm. what to expect. Can you just kind of go through them points? Yeah, on the course, I've actually just wrote a new um, HANAD accredited uh, and advanced course protection course. So there's two aspects of course protection. We've got the SIA license, which everyone needs to work legally as a course protection operator. And I've also put together a new concept of course protection training, which I had accredited. And I've brought different elements into it. And obviously people look at the firearms expect expectations um, and other things, but I've thrown a different slant into it. So we brought in a number of people who will work with me. Rather than just Phil Moulton doing it, which, you know, it, it sounds okay, but then if we bring people in who are completely qualified in what we're doing, is thrown a new flavour into it. So the course will be the, the advanced CP course. We're going to have two days working with the Royal Yacht Association, which will give it a qualification for powerboat handling, safe handling. Um, and it will give it an international uh, ticket as well. So it's two full days working with qualified instructors, working on a rib. And I've put that together because I thought, well, many people in the, the VIP status have boats and if you don't know how to handle it as a course protection person you're going to be failing okay so i've put that together i've also brought another colleague of mine in uh, called john cardin left um he's one of the leading experts in aviation security works for the government a fantastic bloke what he doesn't know about security on the aviation side of it um unbelievable guy and he's given up his time to come in and brief us about 
the protocols on the aviation security. Now I've had three years working the, in the security industry for the aviation side of it, but John is phenomenal. Um, and his background will just bring so much to the course, uh, as well as um, Chris O'Neill, who's going to be doing safe handling for the boats. The other aspect of it is a guy called Simeon Rosetta. I'm hoping I've got his name right. Uh, Simeon does um, butlering, so etiquette, social etiquette. Um, and again, that's been lost by a number of people um, when they're doing cost protection. They don't understand the protocols. They don't understand how to dress, but you know, basically how to conduct themselves. Um, and then the sort of things that we've put together. And then finally, I've put together the surveillance aspects of it and counter surveillance. So they will get a level three in surveillance and, and counter surveillance. That will be delivered by myself and a couple of other colleagues. Um, I've done quite a lot of surveillance working for different people. Um, and that will be a fully qualified course. So I think it's going to bring a new concept into what we do. People already have to be qualified to attend the course because obviously you do work in, in an operation. But brand new, I'm dead excited. A bit nervous, but very excited at the same time. It sounds really exciting. And I have to say, when I saw it on your LinkedIn, I thought, like, what a cool idea as well. Because like you say, it's completely different as such. So with your other course, yeah. if I was to say I was a student, I was coming on a course, what can I expect? For the, for the cost protection course at the normal level three, which is the SAA accreditation, you have 150 hours um, of direct training. Um, and I put you through a number of scenarios. We don't just sit in a hotel room or a room. We go out. It, it's actually set in a rural setting. So we have to do our surveillance, counter surveillance. We do full reconnaissance drives. So we do a number of drives to certain venues and you have to colour code it, record it, film it. So you are really put under the under the uh, hammer a bit. One of my students says, Phil, you're always throwing us under the bus because we never know what to expect from you. But that's the civilian aspect of it. Um, you don't have the big full teams that people think you do. You've got to be dynamic and that's what I bring to it. So on my side of it is bringing a little bit more reality to it. But we cover everything so much in depth. Um, people go away and they're completely published. <laughs> I'm doing my job. That's that's me, my doing my job. And in in the years, I've trained over two and a half thousand people. That's a lot of people. So yeah, so I've not done so bad really. Um, and yeah, I'm proud of that as well. I'm very proud. Yeah, no, I bet. So what does it take to become a bodyguard? What do you look for when you're training these people? The first thing I do, and I had a chat today for me about the course, I always have a meeting with as many students as I can do on a one-to-one -one basis, basically so that they can speak to me, I can speak to them, I can see what they're like, want to, basically what they want to get out of the course. Um, CP is, 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 is it's an industry where you know, you've got to put everything into it. Um, a lot of folk go into it just because they want the glamour. It's not glamorous, but it's, um, it's, it's all about the planning, the preparation. So it's about somebody who's methodical, they're open-minded, uh, they're flexible in how they work. Um, and basically, you've got to be a people's person. You've got to be able to work with people as well. Um, you can't be closed down. Um, none of these aggressive people. You tend to find out how people will work when you're training them. And you try and mould them into a way. So you're saying, well, you can't do it this way. This is the way that you're supposed to be doing it. Um, but at the end of the day, I can only show you. Um, so I look for a person who's open-minded, you know, good communicator, flexible. Um, and that's how I, you know, I, I can't vet everyone. But, you know, I say to people, what do you want out of the course? What do you want to benefit? How do you want to benefit? Um, and what type of market are you going into as well, which is very important. So you said before that it's made up of like 150 hours. How does that work? Is it in different like modules? Is it full time, part time? Yeah, well, the problem that we have in the industry is because it's, it's 150 direct hours. Now it is split into different modules um, and a lot of people can't take the time off, especially in the, the current situation we're in with COVID, etc. They can't commit to 15, 16 days straight in one block. 
So I've actually come up with this idea and I've worked on the idea for a long time uh, where they can do part time. But they're doing more than 150 hours with me sometimes because you've got to make sure that you're refreshing each module. So if we're doing roles and responsibilities on the first couple of modules, crisis management, conflict management, etc., that's one aspect of it. Then we go into setting up the operation, the team. Um, so we go through all the different modules um, and making sure that everything's covered. And um, they have to fill in a massive portfolio, which is given to them paper form and electronically as well. So they have, um, it becomes their Bible at the end of the day. It's their own work and that's their evidence. Everything that they do, we film, we take photographs, um, we give them a lot of handouts so that they can refresh on it, different templates, different scenarios as well. So they do get an awful lot of information, but they're, they're required to do an awful lot of work themselves. Every single module that I give them, they have to do a, a mini test at the end of every module. That's nothing to do with their exam. That's me just testing them. But it's making sure they've absorbed it in the brain as well. Yeah, it's, it's quite in depth. Yeah, it sounds very in depth. But then I suppose for such a high profile job as such, looking after like all these people, it has to be in depth to get it right. How long is the exam at the end? The, there's a number of exams. Um, there's three multiple choice exams, which are marked externally, and there's two internal marked exams which more like word booklets so in total you're probably talking only about four four hours for the full exams for the multiple choice but then you've got the word booklets as well which they take i think they take two hours two and a half hours for the both of them um but the research as well so i always say the exams are one thing but how you pass a course is your evidence of how well you presented your portfolio so it's like anything, if you do an exam for a mail or something, you can pass the exam, but if you can't evidence it and prove that you've understood it, you might as well have not done the course. You've got to prove that you understand it. It's got to be in writing. They have to do briefings. So if they're doing a vehicle search, we plant things on the vehicles, which are, which are harmless, um, and they have to search a vehicle. They have to find the device, um, and they do that in twos. And basically, we film and doing that, uh, and we do different scenarios as well. So we do test them on every single module, even down to the conflict management. Uh, they get a little word booklet which they've got to fill in, and then we put them through scenarios as well. Uh, the surveillance and counter surveillance, the task all the time. So when we do a reconnaissance drive, I put certain things in place to see how well they're, they're picking up on the surveillance and counter surveillance. So they are tested all the way through. Um, and people around the LinkedIn will probably say, you know, Phil does test us. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Which is good. So you're also like starting a YouTube channel with, I know you said you had a couple of clips with the likes of David Beckham. How does that all fit in with the training? Basically what we're, what we're trying to do on on the, the social media side of it, it brings a little bit of uh, realism to what we're doing. Um, and people are more interested in seeing pictures um, rather than talking. So if we can prove that we've done things, because in the industry there's, there's a lot of people who say they've done things and they've not really really done that. Um, I'm not being cruel to people, but people um, put things out there. So I'm trying to show the little clips that we can do. Um, I was very honoured to work with David Beckham. Um, that was with my time at the FA. I was with the FA for nine years. I was, I was trusted. There was only two of us trusted in the whole of the UK. Um, I was from the Birmingham, I was um, all the way through. And then there was another gentleman, he did from Birmingham down. So every time the FA and the, the first thing 21 to come up to our side it was my job to look after them do the security etc it's working under the fa um so i worked with david a number of times um and i was quite proud of that he was he was a real gentleman um I, you know a really nice guy worked with all the the england team uh not just in the uk worked abroad with them on the on the 21s and the uk first team as well so i was quite privileged really um and that experience gave me a lot of Gave me a lot of comfort really because it knows i know that when i teach people as well i'm teaching from experience 
because what I'm what I'm teaching people, I've actually done myself. So every time I teach a course, I relate certain things to certain jobs. So if someone wanted to go on your course, how would they go about applying? The, the, the chap who contacted me today, very strange, he contacted me in 2018, strangely enough, because I, I looked his number up, um, and he wanted to do the course. So this was my recommendation. So I would say about 90% of my uh, course people are from recommendations. I've just finished training, I think it's 14 um, security lads who work for Manchester United and they do the course protection for the Manchester United football team. Very proud of that. They all come to me and it was all by recommendation. So most of the time it's people who talk and say, well, Phil Milton does, does this, etc. But, you know, my phone number's out there. People can just pick the phone up and speak to me. Um, and they normally answer quite quickly. Emails. So it's either by me, emails. The, the website that I've got is very, very basic. Um, and I will say that. It's, um, we're starting all over again. So it basically phone numbers and just email. And I'll always talk to people. So if someone wants to get qualified, they contact you. What sort of like prices are they looking at to become a qualified close protection officer, bodyguard? You can, you can pay an awful lot of money to do exactly the same course. Now, um, I'm not going to upset folk out there because people run their own courses and they budget in a number of different things. They can run the course in wherever they want to, but the end thing is they get a piece of plastic which says SIA course protection. Um, so it depends on the instructors. I'll be, I'll be honest, I charge £1,400. Okay. That's all I charge. And that's for everything. I don't know if you're going to put that on, but that's why people can pay up to two three even five thousand pounds for the same course um which i always think to myself that's an awful lot of money um i've been in the industry and i've tried to do it so i'm helping people um i think i'm old classic trying to help folk get on the on the ladder and i've done that all my career as a cp trying to help people i, I never cut costs um, and I never compromise. Um, that's that's the price. This is what you're going to do, and then the else that you're going to do it. So it doesn't matter what we do. We're going to do the hours. My final question, what I kind of want to ask you, is once they're qualified, how do they then go about getting a job? Is it the case of networking? Yeah, one hundred percent. It's it's all about networking, getting name out there, speaking to people, um, and it's it's like the chicken and the egg situation. You've got to get into the job to do the job, and if you've never done the job, people say, "Well, you don't even know what you're doing because you've never done it." People need an opportunity to prove themselves. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are very good, and there's a lot of people out there that are really poor. Um, so people need to network, and it's time to be as well. You know, going on social, like we're doing now, social network, and um, speaking to people, uh, researching the people I'm talking to as well. Very important now. You know, talk to people, see what the track, is, the track record is, um, what they've done in the past. Um, and it's important. There is work out there, um, and I won't labour on the fact that the industry has become quite diluted, um, but it has. Um, and it's, it's very sad. Yeah, it's very sad because there's some really good folk out there that are not getting the work because we price ourselves here and the people who are just coming into the job will do it there. So that's a compromise. Uh, and they're not just compromising on the price, they're compromising on safety as well. Very interesting. Thank you very much for sharing about your business and how it all works as well. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity again. Thank you. Now, I hope you all enjoyed that interview. I think one of the main things that we can all learn from that is how someone actually becomes a bodyguard, the training that goes into being a bodyguard. You wouldn't even think that a bodyguard would need etiquette training, but they do, and it was really interesting to speak with Phil to find out all that information. Now, you can follow Phil or apply to be on one of his courses at the links here. If you're yet to hear Phil's story, head over back to my channel to watch the video before this one where I was speaking to Phil about how he ended up 
becoming a bodyguard trainer. If you have someone that inspires you, comment below. I'm always so interested to find out who others find inspirational. Likewise, if you have an inspirational story to tell, comment below, drop me a message on social media, or even drop me an email. On Wednesday at five o'clock, I'll be speaking with Instagram influencer, Georgia Mercer, to find out about her journey and how she has become successful enough to be working with big brands such as Pretty Little Thing. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, comment below, and don't forget to hit subscribe. See you all on Wednesday. See you later.